Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back on this beautiful Saturday morning. So, thanks to everyone that liked the previous video, watched it, even if you didn't. I'm sure one day you guys will hover over it, take a gander, and I appreciate it greatly. With that being said, let's jump into episode two of Real-ish. So, in the last episode, I talked about the games that made you want to be a gamer. And I said, you know, let's take a look at three games that really influenced how you see games in the future, or even how you played games going um, forward. And today I'm here to share my three games with you guys. Now, it doesn't have to be three games, the first three games that you played, or, you know, the, the first three games that your parents bought or you were able to find money for or whatever. I'm talking about once you put that game in and you hit the start screen, you you saw the first cutscene or hell, even if cutscenes weren't even a thing back then. If you were if you played your game on Super Nintendo and you knew holy shit. This changed my life. Then you know that's what I'm talking about. That's what made you a gamer. That's what made me a gamer. So let's just jump right into it, all right? Now, some of these games might seem very familiar. Um, but, you know, I'm a 90s baby. So these games you probably definitely heard of. And if you haven't, the hell, after you watch this, go ahead and look them up. I would love for people to play the games that I have played and get that same feeling and it's never too late i'm rambling let's just get into it i love talking to y'all man that's what it really is but we just gonna jump right in which is something i've said three times already but while this video started but we doing it we doing it game number one for me for ish it would have to be chrono trigger man chrono trigger was such a powerful game for its time. And I'm not talking about graphics or anything like that. Like, I was already a... F so I'm a super fan of Dragon Ball Z. And the fact that Akira Toriyama, you know, designed some of these characters... I mean, you can see you start the game up and you're just like, oh shit, he looks... Uh, Magus looks like Vegeta. Chrono looks like... A redhead Goku. <laughs> Super Saiyan God, by the way. But I digress. That's one thing that, that drawn me to the game. As you play the game, you make choices. Your weapons look different. Even if it's just a different gleam on the sword. That is effort, baby. That is effort. The storytelling, amazing. If you like time travel games... That is right up your alley. I don't want to give away anything if you haven't played it. Um, but the, here are the reasons why I love it. Again, the storytelling is amazing. I love time travel games. The character design, the abilities, the, the overall character interactions, the way you can go about completing the game without certain characters oh my god that game is the pinnacle of rpgs for me thank you squaresoft i appreciate you greatly for your early work and i hope that game will never be forgotten all right Number two, so when I was young, um, I used to follow my sister everywhere, obviously. I mean, she's older than me. Um, she's the one that got me into anime. She's the one that got me into gaming. Like, I look up to her a whole bunch. So shout out to all the dope brothers and sisters out there that are just 
introducing everyone to new things. Like, shout out to them. Round of applause. So, um, I used to follow her everywhere. Um, after school, weekends. And we used to go um, and play games on the weekend. So, we would go to, like, uh, a video game store. And if you gave them, like, $5, you could play for the hour. Um, and most notably, um, the game that was always in the Super Nintendo was Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And <laughs> I didn't know it back then, but I was pretty nasty. I used to pick Guile. Well, of course, I picked Ryu and Ken first. Um, uh, I wasn't too good at inputs, like DP inputs and things like that, like the Z, the Z input. Um, but Hurricane Kicks, uh, uh, fireballs, I could do that easy peasy, no big deal, you know what I'm saying, brush my shoulders off, um, but when it came to that, I was just like, you know what, let me try other characters, so I started using Guile, and once you wrap your head around a charge character, it's real easy to, like, outplay other people because you allow, you play the turtle game, as my best friend says, and that's, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. You let the enemy come to you. Um, sonic booms when they're far, somersaults when they're close. I stayed on that console for a very long time with multiple wins, and that, the feel of winning in front of a crowd over and over again, no matter how you play, that's really, that's really what made me fall in love with fighting games. And even today, I, I play so many different fighting games just to get that same feel that I had from Street Fighter 2 Turbo back in the day. Now, it's not going to be replicated. I'm already in love with gaming and fighting games, but I am still traveling in a sense to find that one game that's gonna be like i'm your street fighter 2 baby play me i'm hoping street fighter 6 is that game we'll just have to wait and see and number three i hope you guys aren't gonna get too mad about this but it is another rpg and it came out on playstation um and it's called Tales of Destiny 2, also known as Tales of Eternia. Um, that's the Euro, the Euro, Europe edition. Um, but Tales of Destiny 2. Now, Tales of Destiny 2 is what got me in love with the Tales series. Had I not played Tales of Destiny 2, I don't think I would have been hopelessly in love with the Tales series like I am today. Again, the character design... The weapons look 100% different. There are summons. There are amazing magics. Every single character in that game has a Limit Break-esque type move. It's real-time battles. It's random battles as you're walking the map. But when you actually get into the battle, it's a left-right grid that you control your character with. Um, and you are able to dodge moves, um, you know, execute certain moves with certain characters by inputs. Like, the game is also multiplayer. Granted, it is a little lacking on the multiplayer because only one person can control um, the moving around. But once you get into battle, that's when it's like, okay, you can take Farah or you can take Keel or Melody or Chat. Obviously, these are the characters in the game. They all do something different. Um, Keel and Meredy are your magic users, also summoners. Reed is your swordsman, um, Aurora art user. Farah is your brawler, she is amazing. Chat is your pirate, and I'm missing one other person. I think his name is Max. I could be wrong, but he uses a gigantic fucking gun, and he's awesome. You get him super late, though, so, like, I didn't, I didn't uh, use him too much, but... Let me tell you guys, like, that game is amazing, 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 amazing. If you can somehow get your hands on it, whether you uh, buy a, P uh, a PSP and buy the Tales of Eternia game through, like, Amazon or something, like, that game, I promise you, 
is worth whatever time you want to spend in it between how great the story is, how it left off. The story is amazing. If you've played it already, you know how it is. If you haven't, I urge you to do so. Um, those are my top three games that really changed my gaming experience going forward. And I am super grateful to the developers, to Capcom, to Squaresoft, to Namco at the time for just making those games. And it felt like they were like specifically tailored for me. And I love when developers tailor games for each individual person that wants to play because that shows how serious they are. And I love that. That pretty much wraps up this week's episode. Um, again, please, guys, feel free to leave your top three in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you do enjoy what you hear, or even if you just want to hear some ramblings of a guy that loves games on a Saturday morning or any day that you watch this. And if you want to see me play games live with my friends, joke around and talk about how much we hate games, but we really do love them. You can holla at me at twitch.tv forward slash ish binos. That's with a Z at the end. I-S-H-B-E-A-N-O-Z. And you can holla at me. Um, I'm always there. And just for one more thing, honorable mention. Let's throw Resident Evil in there, because holy shit, do we love some early Resident Evil. But that's it for this week, guys. Thank you again for watching, for liking, for subscribing. I appreciate every one of you, and I love every one of you. So what's what are you waiting for? Hit me with that top three. See you next week.